Hi everyone, welcome to episode 12 of Show Me How It's Done. I hope you're all staying warm. If you're here in Edmonton with me, we have a nice amount of snow coming down, but it's not so bad because it was getting really icy, so I kind of like the big fat snowflakes today. But if you're watching this, that means you're warm inside and you're ready to craft with me. So welcome. I today wanted to show you an adorable fun fold card that I designed initially for this Darling Donkeys stamp set. However, after I made it, I also got the announcement that next month we have these chickens who are going to be released and uh, they'll be available for purchase both of them with coordinating dies. So some of you are wondering why this one is so old. This was actually a celebration set a couple years ago and Stamping Up has created a coordinating birthday chicken set and then dies, I'll just show them to you, sneak peek for you uh, in here. So I feel like I might have to revamp this card with some sort of chicken coop as well in the future. But for now, I'm gonna show it to you with the donkeys and then you can let your imaginations go wild if you already own the donkeys, what you might want to do when you can order these chickens too. Okay, so let's get going for the day. If you don't own this one, just so you know, it's a free item with a $60 purchase. So you can get that um, just by shopping for anything you want in the catalog and then add this as your celebration item for free, okay? So to start for our little barn, we're going to need a piece of real red cardstock. This is going to be for the barn base itself. So I'm just gonna move this out of my way for the moment. This piece needs to be cut at three and three quarters by 11 inches. And then you'll need to put some score marks. So one and three quarters and seven inches are the two that you need, okay? And then go ahead and fold on both of those lines and maybe grab your bone folder so it's nice and crisp like so. Hello to those of you who are watching. I'm hoping you can hear me because I know last week we had fun with me accidentally pressing mute. Um, so here's your card base right here. We're going to decorate the front as well as put a little card in the inside for you to write on. Okay, so let's go step by step. We're going to start with this barn base here on the front, the nice door. So you'll need a piece of basic white cardstock, and that one is, there we go, that one is going to measure three inches by three and one quarter. So it's a rectangle, it's not a perfect square. So three inches by three and a quarter. And then if you've noticed in our annual catalog, we have a beautiful assortment of stitched triangles. They are kind of hidden sometimes so if you're wondering, they're on page 179, these stitch triangles, there's all sorts of them. The primary ones that we're using right here are those on the left-hand side, but of course you do have different um, dimensioned ones as well. You have isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles, you know, all those fun things. So we need four of these little triangles from that set on the left that I mentioned. These are going to be the second smallest one. So you'll be able to tell if you're having the triangles in front of you that, um, you know, of course the small ones would end up just looking like polka dots in the middle of this door if you cut the white piece and um, the larger ones wouldn't fit. Okay, so let's get these laid out on here. Now, if you're very, very brave, you can just kind of eyeball where they should be and move them around so that you can fix them and make a nice doorway. However, if you're a little unsure about that, grab yourself a pencil and a ruler, and we're just gonna make a little penciled border on a couple of these um, sides. So just go a quarter of an inch in and be very, very soft with your pencil because we're gonna have to erase all of these lines. So a quarter inch in, draw a little line and you could do that on one or two of the other sides as well just to give yourself something to work with so that you can get this perfect. I know I like proportional looking projects so this is just your little trick. 
and if you only do two sides it will be enough to show you what you where you need to line up okay so of course we'd line up the bottom of one of our triangles to that side roughly in the middle and the same here and then just make sure that you're laying out your other triangles first before attaching anything because you want to just make sure that you're happy with where they're sitting okay so we could move that around just a tiny bit like so if you really want to be specific draw that border all the way around you won't um, you won't make any mistake at all then all right but we're gonna just say two sides is good so we can start attaching our triangles to the base you can use any sort of adhesive that you have on hand um, I wouldn't suggest a dimensional just because you want this to look like a nice flush barn door and any imperfection in your lineup will be a little bit more pronounced with the dimensional here so just lay that guy down and then start attaching all the other pieces as well so just a very different use maybe for our triangles but still a lot of fun and hopefully a reason for you to um, to get them out and play with them instead of just having them sit for that you know one project in a blue moon you need a triangle for so this is the most finicky part but it is worth it when it's nice and lined up And then once you have attached all of them, make sure you have a pencil that has a ruler because you don't want to see any of these pencil marks on your project. So you'll just grab a ruler or a, uh, an eraser, pardon me, and get rid of those. Okay. And can back up. There we go. So just gently, you shouldn't have that much showing. rid of all of those lines okay there we go so there's our adorable door we're going to go ahead and put that straight onto the barn if you want to get fancy you could probably pop this one up or even put it onto a scrap of paper and have it open and close and maybe I'll play with that some other time but I just kind of wanted my card front to be stationary for this project like so so you'll notice this will not end up in the middle of this page right otherwise you've got really weird proportions we want a section at the top for the roof to overlap so if you just kind of hold that closed with your finger and find the middle place in what you see showing okay so make sure this top is down, otherwise you're gonna end up using this top space and your door will look disproportional when you open and close your card. Okay, so there is our barn door. Now we're going to work on our roof up here. So in that same triangle family that we used for the small um, door pieces, we're also going to take the largest die and use it for the roof. Okay, so this one, I'm going to put adhesive all over this blank area of rectangle. It doesn't have to be anything perfect, just throw enough on there that your triangle would be attached to this section. And you're just making sure that the bottom of your triangle is lined up with the edge of this paper. And you've got about an equal amount of corner showing on your roof okay so press this down now you can either grab your trimmer or a pair of scissors whatever you prefer and we're going to use the edge of this triangle as our guide and we're just going to cut off that excess paper like so so this is giving us our triangular roof 
without having to sit here and do measurements like we had to on the bottom section here. There we go. So here is my beautiful roof, but of course we want it decorated a little bit. So we're going to grab three strips of basic white. So two of them will be the same size and one will be longer. They're all three a quarter of an inch wide. However, the two small ones, you're going to need to measure three and three quarter inches long. And the long one is four and one quarter. Okay, so the long one is what you start with. You can put some sort of glue on the back of that or I have double-sided tape so it's ready to go. If I can get my nail, there we go. This is gonna go along the bottom here and you'll notice it's just short of the edges. This is so you don't have to do any trimming off the side because these two pieces are going to cover this remaining corner, okay? So you can make it longer if you want, but then you'll end up having to trim that excess off. And then this way you don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, one thing to keep in mind when you put adhesive onto these short pieces is you do have some of the roof line hanging over. So don't put adhesive all the way to the end. Or if you're worried that you might put your adhesive straight onto the red triangle. All of that space will be uh, needing adhesive and then you don't need to worry about any of it being sticky on this side that's hanging down, okay? So one and two, it doesn't matter at all what order you put these two on in. Uh, you can go left first or right, it doesn't matter. But they both just overlap at the top and come down the sides, like so. Super cute. However, we need a little hayloft. So I went with my layering ovals. Um, these are another great die set that I always keep handy. And I went with the third smallest in the set and the second smallest in the set to make this. One in white, one in real red. And we're just going to attach those two together like so. And then for my hay bale, this is where stuff gets fun and you get to repurpose dies. I wanted to find something that had kind of a bump look on the top of it. You can pick anything out of your collection. This is the um, smallest flower from the peony die set. Okay, so all I did was I cut this out in bumblebee and what I'm about to do is just attach it straight to the oval that I've laid down. Don't worry about putting adhesive on the bottom of it because we are cutting that part off, but just make sure that the top has a little bit. Okay, like so. So put this just roughly in the middle. You're worrying about this up, the space up at the top, okay? You want to decide how much background you want to show. I found just putting this right in the middle gives me the best potential for what I'm doing. Now, if you'd like, you can put this straight onto your card with kind of half of it hanging down, and then we'll use this back line to cut. However, it, um, you kind of want to make sure you don't end up showing any of these flowers. So I just usually grab my trimmer right away and cut this down to size before adding it to the card. So I can line this up on my trimmer about at the one inch mark off the oval, the top of the oval there, and that's a pretty good um, size for me to work with. It won't be exact, you can go one and a quarter, whatever, wherever you've lined stuff up is fine. But then we're going to attach this to the top here. Right inside the middle, okay? So I thought with the chickens that it would look really cute if I took the die with the eggs and put a couple of them up in the top, but I'll have to play with that another time. So here's our front, it looks great. 
but it's always nice to have something to write on. So we're going to open up our card, like so, and put a little piece of paper on the inside. So this is another piece of basic white. I have cut this one at three and a half by three and three quarters. And that will fit right in the inside space. Again, we're not really worrying about any of that roof space. We're just making a rectangle inside here. Like so. And then keep in mind they're two different sizes, so don't put it on the wrong way. Just give yourself a nice little border using that bottom score line. Okay, so I mentioned darling donkeys and I would like to add a little donkey to my card to make this fun. So I'm using the basic gray ink and I've got my little donkey on the block, the one who's sitting and looks like Eeyore. Just tap him down. Oh, that's really light. I think you need re-inking. Oh well, we'll color him and it won't matter. And then I thought it was really cute if you grabbed the sentiment here, hee haw, and just gave a few of those so you have some space to write in and, uh, and some space for his sentiment. Now we're gonna color this guy. So I always like a little pink in the ears, so I'm using the light flirty flamingo, just something very subtle in the middle of his ear. And then I'm bringing in my light and my dark um, gray granite. You could use smoky slate, you can use crumb cake, whatever you choose is completely fine. And um, it's totally up to you. So I'm going to use my dark just for his body. I guess I could use this fat part here. And then I'm gonna use the light to kind of offset some of his features. So his hooves and his muzzle there leaving just a little bit of space in his ears that are still pink. So you don't want that to blend completely. There we go. There. And then, so yours of course will be nice and dark. My ink pad needed re-inking for his legs, but you can kind of see it. That's why we use a gray and it just blends in. So I chose to use gray instead of black because that means I don't have to bring in a light and a dark shading technique. I already have a darker gray in the donkey already. Okay. And then bring in the light and you can just do his tail, his muzzle. and his hooves. There we go. So this is definitely a card that you'll probably need a little bit of quality time with your big boss ahead of time, cutting out all of your triangles and ovals and um, this little hay loft. But if you were to prep a few of them at the same time, I hope that you'll find it's actually not that hard to, um, to easily assemble all your pieces. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had a really fun time checking out this fun fold card. This was one of the cards I did at my specialty class, but we decided to share one of the tutorials with you. Um, and I will see you guys all next week for episode 13 of Show Me How It's Done. Bye.